Okay, so long story short, this is a very long story, but uh, I got a text message from a friend's wife uh, with some extremely graphic screen- screenshots. Nothing, you know, nothing illegal, but the mess. Like it, w- it was, you know, what a forum is like you know, someone mm-hmm. m- makes a post and then sure. people comment underneath of it. So I got some forum posts sent by my friend's wife, who was, you know, saying you need to check this website out. This is disgusting. Can you do something about it? Because everybody, you know, they assume I'm a hacker. I can do anything. You know, that's people just assume that. So Can she you sent improve my credit score? Oh, that's I get asked that by everyone I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it wasn't a no, man. <laughs> it wasn't a no. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I seen these screenshots and it, it got to me. You know, it genuinely got to me. And uh, and uh, I went on their website and skipping all of the technical details, I found a backdoor. I installed three backdoors on their server. I was able to download all the message history for every user. I was able to find their. Uh, find their, their private messages where they were trading photos back and forth. I consulted with an attorney uh, to make sure that I wasn't breaking the law by grabbing their data because I didn't want to be in possession of any of that stuff either. So there's nothing illegal about having the text uh, messages or the contextual evidence. Um, from there, I found the owner of the website through an email address, and the email address came back to a guy named Nathaniel Larson, who was a guy running for Congress in Virginia. So I was like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. This is going to go be all over the news. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew it was big. So I saw there was about 3,000 active users on this website who were doing horrible things. Uh, one, I'll just name one example. There was a father that posted a photo of their child in the bathtub where you couldn't see everything, but you could see enough. And it said on the top of it, um, uh, they have no idea what's going to happen to them tonight. And then underneath there was comments with other people saying what they were going to do to this person's child. Oh, my Sick. God. And Evil. at this point, remember, I'm, I have access to their server, and they don't know it. So after I spoke to my attorney who told me, hey, you're, you did break federal law. You know, like if you report this, you're risking going to prison. But I was just thinking to myself, if I bring this to trial, what jury is going to convict me? Yeah. I mean, I just don't think guilty right. or not, I, I, I'm willing to take my chances. Um, so I, I reached out to my attorney, reached out to another attorney in Virginia since he was run, you know, a guy trying to run for Congress. Um, I spoke to over 10 news stations. I have some of the calls recorded with them. Everybody was interested in this story. They thought it was amazing. As soon as it got to legal, they, not, not one of them posted the story. Even when I said, remove my name from it, remove any of the info I obtained illegally from it, just alert people that this website exists on the Internet, nobody posted it. So I got an FBI uh, report tip line number. That, I think it was a website, ic3.gov. It's an Internet Complaint Center report number. So I got that. Um, the, the kicker, which is what got me started in this after all of that, is six months later I'm, I'm watching the news or I'm reading the news online. I see Nathaniel Larson arrested at an airport at a layover with a 12-year-old girl that he kidnapped and raped. And... They were fully aware of what he was doing. They're fully aware of the 3,000 other people that I caught on the website with their IP addresses, their emails, their chat history, everything about them. A case, you know, on a golden platter for, for any, any, any district attorney. They're just letting this slide. And nothing happened. They didn't even bring up his websites in the news articles. So, he, he, yeah, so, you know, not, not saying that, uh, that, that things wouldn't have happened to other children with the, all the guys – you know, that no, I you have it. to think that. I mean, how many people? That's what it makes sure. me feel through like that inactivity you know? had their lives ruined. Yeah, because there's and there's there's those guys are still you know they haven't been arrested. I still have the information at, right now. You know, I'm ready to hand it over again whenever they want. Um, but the guy Nathaniel Larson, the guy running the website, that's in prison. It, the 12 year old would have never been kidnapped and raped oh. if they would have took them. If they would have took to you. If they listened to me the first time, and yeah. and it's just. That's, that's got to be frustrating. It, it was frustrating. It's frustrating to me now, even thinking about it. So it's it's sure. getting uh, it's it's getting you know it got me motivated to do something in this in this field. Not only uh, you know just to help, but I, I didn't want any notoriety. I didn't want my name attached to anything. The only re- only time my name was attached is when we started to do things together. I stand behind the camera when when Scrappy confronts them. Um, it, but you know now I'm okay with that. It's fine. But the goal was never about me. It was about the kids. Right.